Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Tuesday, October 17th, 2023. An extremely bizarre trading day. Uh, we started with leaving off where I where I had set up last night and discussing that I had put up an alternate count, which actually now appears to be the preferred count, I have to say. And I want to just answer a couple of questions that kind of came up. It's like, what, what would determine that I just slap up an X, as somebody said, just kind of put up an X um, on an ongoing count. And it's where the count as I had laid it out became invalidated. And I had labeled this one, two, one, two, and it had not yet traded up to that high. So coming in yesterday, expecting that we might get a one and then a turn and a large turn and just starting to head lower and starting to break moving averages. That was what I would have been expecting under how I had labeled the chart. So what happened instead was that we did start to sell off. And then by the time our opening came, we just decided, no, we were going straight up. Soon as it broke above 44.07.75 or 44.08, that count became invalidated. And instead of being 1212, I had to then revert that it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it was a 5, 3, 5, but still three waves down, followed by a larger move up and breaking above to highs. So what are my choices? And the first choice that I had really looked into prior to yesterday was that if minor wave two was not over, we needed to continue to allow for the possibility that we would get up to here, which would be the next resistance area and a fib resistance area for a minor wave two, according to the Fibonacci retracements. So how would my, what would the possibilities or how could it get up to this level? Well, and then I went through that, that this was a five, three, five. And I went through several iterations of what was going on today. There was the possibility it was like one, two, and then, and then again, that we were in a one, two, and then it starts over. One, two, three, four, five, three, four, or A, B, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, three, A, B, C, four, but then the four overlapped wave one. So even if I was trying to count this as, you know, we had the A and the B, and then this was all going to be the C wave, what would have ended up being down here overlapped. And then this ends up being three. So a lot of things just knock things out and you just move on to the next possibility. What I was satisfied with at the time was this is an ABC. And so the next logical being that this turned into a 535, five, but still three waves down, it turns into an X wave. So it's an intervening X wave between two ABC counter trend rallies to form that minor second wave. So these are of minute degree. Now, that is seemingly what's happening. So as I left it last night, I had discussed that we had wave A and or that we needed we we needed to complete which actually we did complete the A wave and likely we were going to move through and get into a possible B wave down. Well, that B wave kicked in big time this morning when we got our economic data, which was not well received by the market. And it really appeared that the market was just going to start to break down. I mean, I can just drop this and, and we can put it on a 15 minute chart and start to look. Here's the, here's the number comes out right there. 
bam, 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 bam. And then we get an opening. So, yep, they rally back up and then we get open. And what happens? They drive it back down. And it almost, it, it was so bizarre. But I'm looking for the B wave. We get it. And then they just absolutely turn it around and start buying it all back. Now, it fit the Elliott, it fit the technical view of what the market, but what was happening all around it was so contra to what actually the orders were showing. Now, having said that, I want to go back out to my hourly chart. I've, if In my own trade room this morning, I kept making remarks of the Russell never went down, never went negative through the numbers and and after. And then once the market opened and we headed south again in the S&P, in the NASDAQ, and actually in the Dow, but the Russell never went negative. And I found that to be very bizarre. So that was the first hint that something was up. The second was, if we take a look, and I do keep a tab on it here, the trend, the trend declined down to 50, but then started to rally again. It never went negative to show negative breath in the market. So there was hint number two, like, hmm, something is afoot. And then, of course, it started to climb again as the market rallied up to those highs. So technically, it all fit. Where it didn't fit is we had negative data that really started suggesting that the interest rates are going to be in trouble. So this whole concept of, of what we're expecting in interest rates may or may not happen. We saw the the bond market or the treasury markets take a nosedive. I mean, the 30-year bond closed down over a point, but at one point was down quite much more than that. And then turned and it rallied all the way back, never going positive, but it rallied strongly back up and then dropped again. So here we have that being translated into our markets, into that equity market. So just taking a bit of an inside view here, we get an ABC, an X, A, B, which by the way, if we looked at this, this was 618. As a B wave, it was 618, a little bit more, but primarily. Now, where what has it done? When we take these calculations, we have, well, wave C would be equal to wave A at 44.39. Well, we got up above the first resistance level, which was 44.16. We poked our nose above it, got up as high as almost 44.23. Actually, we did get to 44.23. So we didn't break this C, but we, we did make a new high above the A wave. So as far as the structure itself could be complete. Then we turned yet again. And we came back again and stuck right at that hourly 50 simple moving average. Broke the 100 again, broke it on the way up, produced a strong rally. Broke it on the way back down, did not do that much damage in terms of breaking all the way. Then we rallied yet again up into the close. So what really then also becomes into play as we take a look at volatility, volatility itself, we have to look at what was going on as we sailed on Friday. The volatility was plus over 20. Then we rallied strongly yesterday. The volatility got annihilated. Then the market continued that annihilation as we were heading lower, vol stuck its nose up again, but then got cracked because the, the 
algorithms, the everything was still in place to sell vol. And that's exactly what happened. Now, what really also comes into play is the volatility options expire on Wednesday. They don't expire on Friday. They expire midweek. So we have this volatility expiration tomorrow morning. And they don't even get all session. It expires tomorrow morning. So it's getting pinned. Now, we all might just kind of really be tired of, of the majority of algorithms or firms that have the power to pin the market where they to their choosing. Because it continues to happen right at 4,400, 4,400, 4,400. We pin it, we pin it, we pin it, 4,400. Until you can't take it anymore, and then suddenly it shifts, and we and it gets marked down. 4,300, 4,300, you know, just, and it keeps, as the market shifts, it gets moved. But once the, we get a rally going, they're going to put it right back there, seemingly at 4,400. Now, so tomorrow we have, we have a volatility options expiration. So that has a play. And that a play in buying the market back up into the close. Now, where the 4,400 really comes in is not necessarily in the ES. It's in the SPX. So we're going to be keeping a very close eye on the SPX, which did not close. It closed at 43.73. And it was higher, obviously higher today. So 4,400. For the SPX, that's kind of where the pin is trying to get dropped. Didn't happen today. It did via the the ES, but it did not via the SPX. So there's still, you know, the possibility we get a little shenanigans going here, and we we don't really know what exactly all that's going to be. So here we sit. Now, what technically can the market achieve tomorrow well, first we got that volatility expiration tomorrow morning then i guess it could turn into a free-for-all now if the game plan is to get the spx to 4400 for tomorrow's opening to really kind of put the ribbon on the package for that volatility expiration well that could happen but they're going to have to pump the stocks back up to produce that type of a price. Could it happen? Yes, it can. Now, Goldman Sachs reported today. Not bad. Beat them. But the stock ends down $5. So is that now being turned and tossed out the window? Like, oh, well, banks to get some good earnings. So why, why are we now hitting the banks? Because of what interest rates may be getting what may happen in interest rates versus getting a pause from the Fed, maybe they really will raise. Give us that hike, one that one last hike. Now, <laughs> again, oh, we got Fed presidents and governors and everybody going out and they're on the stump and they're talking it up and they're giving their speeches. They're doing what they think they need to do. But it's like, we won't know until November the 1st. So a lot can happen. We have a major conflict going on in the Middle East. Can that have an effect on the market? It sure can. It can turn this thing on its nose in a matter of minutes. So on one news thing. The president of the United States is still going tomorrow to Israel. So I'm sure he's going to be leaving middle of the night. Who knows? But flying into Israel for these discussions, these talks, this effort to support Israel and talk. And then we had this explosion, this rocket attack that hit a hospital in northern Gaza. 
There's so much going on, but yet the market chugs right along. Why? Because it's algorithmically quantitatively going. We can't really start to put in world events into what our technical market is doing based on earnings from last quarter. But eventually, reality is going to overtake last quarter because we've got to go on the basis like, well, we're investing for the future. So we're six months out. So what's the economy going to do six months out, et cetera, et cetera? Well, who knows? Okay, so now let's take a look at that technical picture. We have the possibility that the C wave is complete and in turn likely is not going to break above here. That's just, we have that possibility. But I am of the opinion that we will make one more shot higher and end up somewhere around 4440. So I have a lot of different, different fib combinations that get us right to 4440 to 4441, 42 up in that area. And then I have an additional little cluster at 4460. Now, all of that fits to a minor second wave, which is why I'm leaving this up here. But so again, trying to break down this internal here, let me go back to that 15 minute chart and open it up. What am I looking at here? There it is. There is, is that all the B? I wonder what I got going on. One, two, one, two, three. I don't know. You know, is it one, two, three? No, we overlap. So we have a lot where if this is just one and this is two, or is it one, two? And this is a three and a four. And now we're in the fifth. Or is it all done? I don't know. So we have to lay out all the possibilities. So I'm going to go back to that hourly chart. And if we break below 43.65, it's going to not necessarily nullify, but it truly will start to put a real crimp on is this a second abc is this an x wave and then we're going to have to take a look at what is going on here this was clean this was nice we got an abc and if not then is this abc a b and then we're getting in a c wave but what was that so we have a lot of confusing messages from the market which is why I am thinking that we got, this is most of that C wave. We've got this and we rally, mind you, we closed it for what, 44, 4,400. And then we rally and we get above 4416 resistance. We get above 4411 to 16. That's a resistance area. We have additional resistance at 4430. We have stronger cluster at 4440. And then we have 4460. And that then would be, you know, pretty clean, ABC up. And then we get to a point where it's like, hmm, okay, done. Now, if minor wave two gets complete up there, then the expectation remains for this thing to turn and go quickly drop it to the downside. That would be the expectation of a minor third wave kicking in. Now we start to come down and we start to break. We've seen it now. We've seen it. Just similar to what we saw this morning, but when you look at it on the hourly chart, it looks like zip. But that's kind of what you look for. But it doesn't stop, turn, and take it all back. So the overwhelming evidence would be in the development of five waves down from wherever this move tops out. Now, if it topped today, then what am I looking for? Well, that would be like a very small one, a very small two, that pretty much from the Globex opening, 
Maybe we get up a little higher, but we do not make a new high. If this is a one and we're working on a little two. But we're looking at it just turns and it starts to go down and it doesn't stop. It breaks all of this. It doesn't sit within this and eventually gets itself down and breaks 42.35. So once that happens, and we also have the X wave sitting down at 43.40. A break before that kind of puts the kibosh on anything else happening. Unless, unless this is ABC, X, ABC, and then there's another three down, X, and then it turns into a, a, a total of three, a triple ABC. Those aren't as common, but they're not like out of the picture. So again, what when we have these expanded corrective moves and the triples are double and the triple, it's just truly the market is burning up more time than it is price. In this case, it's doing both. It's burning up price in both directions and time. So that's the layout for tomorrow. Let me just take a double check now instead of later. So we got, no, we know what we're looking at. On Wednesday, we have housing starts building permits that comes out at 8.30 a.m. Then we have Fed governor, Fed president, and the Fed beige book. So we have the Fed governor and, and president talking at 12 Eastern, 12.30 Eastern, and then we have another governor coming out at 6.55 p.m. Eastern, so we're all closed. But we have the Fed Beige Book coming out at 2 p.m. That used to be something that everybody really paid attention to. I don't know so much that they do it anymore. But all we really have tomorrow is housing starts and building permits, and not expecting those to be, you know, earth-shattering, other than likely showing additional slowdown. So... It'll be based on what's happening outside of our country, what's happening within our own government. That will have a play. It's not technical. You're absolutely right. It's not technical, but it does affect how we operate. What happens when our government can't pass a budget? The clock is ticking, folks, till that they only got a 45-day extension to keep the government open. That's it. They got 45 days. That's mid-November. And we're now mid-October. So we've already wasted time by not getting the government, the House, to sit and let's put a package together. What, what do we need to do? They're, they're having their little battles about doing what they need to do. All right? So we've got a lot going on. Eventually, the market is going to have to, is going to have to pay attention and react accordingly. And not by, well, we're pinning it at 4,400. Gives this false illusion of, look, well, I'm going to be long because, boy, these earnings are coming out. They're going to be great. This is going to happen. This is going to be great. By the way, United Airlines did not did not, did not. And then we get stories like this. Bonds look cheap to top JP Morgan strategists getting defensive amid Israeli Hamas war. Yeah, they do look cheap, but if they hit a bottom, I don't think so. But, you know, to put a statement like that out, it just, it's like it always bogs my mind. I was going to take a look at United Airlines. Well, looks what they did. The earnings were not bad. Stock dropped to three dollars. Well, two and a two and a half. Nah, yeah, close to three. That's forty. Close to 30, 37, 73. Ended up closing out at thirty-eight, thirty-seven. So again, you know, what's that going to do for us? So here's the story once again. Let me just recap, and I'm now moving on. We got an ABC. I'm expecting that we do continue to move higher. We have 44.30, then we have 44.40, and then we have 44.60. Those are the resistance areas. I am looking for the completion of the minor wave two. And then I'm looking, should that be the case, I'm looking for minor three to kick in, which goes just like that.
That's how it should kick in. It starts to go down without stopping and having every algorithm in the world turn around and go like, we're buying it now and not stop buying it. Those will be all done. So that is the case. If we go down immediately from here, I know I'm having trouble with my Wi-Fi, guys. I hope this all comes out okay. If it just turns and we start to go down from here, then we're likely already done. And we're into that minor third. Same story. Always going to be the same story. If minor wave three is beginning, it's just going to start to go, 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 go. Okay. Over in the NASDAQ. Well, one last thing. Let me take a peek at that daily because we got all the moving averages, right? So the daily, what does it look like? Well, came down and touched it this morning almost. The 20, which is what I was looking for, if it was going to break it, finished the day at 43.61. We got dang close. It didn't do it, and they took off. Took off. If that comes down and breaks it tomorrow, ding, 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 ding. I would look for acceleration, and I would look for 42.35 to be broken, and then eventually this low. Or that low, but this low, 43. 35 and then 42 35 and i would look for it to happen pretty quickly all right over in the nasdaq how the nasdaq what a turnaround by the way i don't know if you guys you know if we're looking at nvidia today holy cow stock was down over 30 and then they rallied it back to be down like half that and then dropped it again it was just it just pretty much pretty wild Okay, here we are in our NASDAQ. Not a very pretty picture, but I'm holding it together here. That again, minute wave one of minor wave three. I like it done. We're calling it right there. This could have been minute wave two, and it certainly started off like, wow, and it even broke below that low. I'm like, okay, we're on the way. And then they stopped and they went, no, we're not. So what did it turn into? A of minute two, B of minute two, even though it had a new low. That's all okay because now it's going to go up and it's going to get above here to finish the C wave. So what can we look at here? I'm going to add, let's just put it in there, C wave. If wave C equals wave A, it's going to be at 15,325. Yeah, that high is 38. But we do have additional resistance uh, just for a minute wave two at 15,375. If it ends there, which is extremely possible, or even just gets its nose above 35 and dies, very possible because this pretty much is a flat. It would be, it would look, it would be more of a flat. This kind of a little much like it was a five. This was a three and we would look for another five. Again, I'd have to go inside here to see where we get a one, two. Is this a three? This is a four. I don't know. A lot of strange things. And then we get that five and we end up here to here. ABC, minor wave two, we're done. What can't happen, because then it affects this, the, where I have marked, uh, excuse me, a minute wave two, a minor wave three. Cannot, cannot, cannot. Excuse me, that's actually a little off. Cannot break above 15,467. So let me do one thing I'm, I like to be totally on point there. There, that's better. So it gave me a couple of points more here. So it can't break above there because then this is not a wave two correction because it's going above the starting point of wave one. Then we're sitting in a very awkward situation like we were or similar to, but then it's going to make this a little bit weird. But I can, I can do, you know, one, 
you know, A, B, C, that's a five, a three, a five. It works out both ways in this particular case. And then we've got A, B, C, X, A, B, C. Then maybe possibly we can get up even a little higher. Again, all depends on truly what happens around the market. What happens with any earnings that are going to come out pre-market tomorrow? So right now, I'm kind of leaving this the way it is and looking for a continuation to the upside to complete a C wave. And I'm going to put a minute two on it. And then looking for that minute three of minor three to kick in. Because it's hanging out up here so long. I'm very tempted to just, you know, that's why I'm giving you the alternate. That's similar to the S&P. It's an ABC. This gets moved. This is an X. And that's an AB. And we get a C wave that takes us up a little bit higher. So if not... A, B, C ends in a small failure, and we nosedive. All things are possible right now. They truly are. So that's the picture. Now, again, for me, folks, I am a day trader. So I don't carry position in any stocks and any of the indexes overnight. I just don't do that anymore. I have in the past. I was a market maker for many, many years. But then again, when you're a market maker, yeah, you might have had directional exposure, but you could hedge. So if you're hedging or if you're straight long or straight short, you're probably getting a little bit queasy with the rocket and the rolling that the market is doing. And you think, okay, I'm in the money. Oh, I'm out of the money. Oh, okay, I'm back in the money. Oh, I'm losing money. So you you if you don't understand hedging, you might want to study it up because maybe you want to keep your long position or you want to keep your short position. But you don't need to be given back tons of money. So learn about hedging. Now, let's take a look at the daily, because that's where I like to keep an eye on a lot of our moving averages. Same deal. Look what it did. It came right down and it touched it. Not all the way, so similar to the S&P. It got down close to that 20 on the daily, and then so it's looking for it to break. So that's still out there. 15,044 is where the 20 is sitting right now. If we turn and we come a flip in and a fly in and come all the way down and we break that, which <laughs> no matter what happens, once wave three kicks in, that's what I'm going to be looking for. I'm going to be looking for that 20 which is sitting down at 15,044 on the daily. Right now on the hourly, we're, we rode through it. You saw it accelerate, go back up. You saw it accelerate. The hourly 200, that remains in play. Where did we finish? We came down and almost broke it again this afternoon before rallying back above 15,200. So all things are possible right now. Trade accordingly. As a day trader, it was like, wow, lots of opportunities today. Really were buying and selling. And the moves were like, whoa, nonstop, get out of the way. I'm just going to get long or I'm just going to get short. And you made good, good money. This is where I'm going to leave this for right now. Again, what we have is uh, housing starts, building permits. That's what comes out tomorrow morning. We have Fed governor speaking uh, mid-morning. And we'll see what happens. So the, the biggest news right now is the president going to Israel. He's going to go into the war zone. And what happened today, whether it was an accident, whether it wasn't, I, you know, there's a lot of tension. There's a lot of tension. And things can, can change and get real nasty real fast. Whether they go and then turn and go and turn and go. They can move very, very quickly. We're in that type of volatile situation. So, and don't forget, fall expiration tomorrow morning. 
All right, the next update will be on Wednesday, October the 18th.